Hello, these are the questions from the final exam from summer 2019 uh, that are relevant for midterm two. Uh, so we have one question for 6.4, one question for uh, properties of Fourier series, and then one question for actually computing a full Fourier series. And then after that, that's all, uh, you know, 9.4 and on stuff that isn't covered generally on midterm twos these days. Um, and note that this was given before Laplace transforms got added back into the syllabus. Uh, so we don't actually have any Laplace transform questions to go over here, but I've uh, gone through every single MA266 Laplace transform question in the past, and you can find those uh, probably in this same playlist if you're watching it through the exam two playlist, or uh, just um, if you go looking, it, it, it's out there somewhere on my channel. Okay, but question eight. Below is the face portrait of a certain damped pendulum system. What happens if we start with an initial angle of pi and an initial angular velocity of negative four? So we can see here that our x-axis is angle, which means that our y-axis is angular velocity. And let's just step back for a second and think about what the behavior of a damped pendulum system should be. So if we have a pendulum that uh, won't keep swimming, swinging forever, that there's some kind of damping coefficient that, that uh, kind of slows it after, after a certain amount of time or a certain amount of swings, uh, we can kind of think about what that behavior would look like. Maybe it starts off with enough angular velocity to do a couple rotations, and then uh, you probably ends up swinging back down uh, to equilibrium uh, at the bottom. And let's make sure that we call that uh, angle at the, at the bottom of its arc uh, pi, uh, zero, sorry, so that two pi would be a full rotation and a rotation of pi away from that would just be uh, standing straight up. So with that in mind, let's take a look. We have an initial angle of pi and an initial angular velocity of negative four. That puts us right here along this trajectory. And they're nice enough to have kind of uh, outlined where, where, this, where this path will take us. And you might be tempted to, you know, start tracing, start tracing these arrows and then, and then uh, head all the way up, up through the axis. But uh, there, there's, a, there's a pretty good reason why you don't, you don't really want to be uh, going over there. And there's a reason why it doesn't show you any of this uh, region over here, because what happens when we hit when we hit this point? It looks like we uh, are at an angle of negative three pi, which is the same as standing straight up. But at that point that we pass through there, what is our angular velocity? So how fast is our pendulum spinning? Well, it's spinning with zero angular velocity. So what's happened is uh, our pendulum started at an angle of pi, which we said corresponds to straight up, and then it did, let's see, one two pi rotation, and then another two pi rotation, so it rotated twice, and it's right back to where it started, uh, standing straight up. And if we just look at what these critical points are, we have saddle points uh, at all of the locations that correspond with the pendulum standing straight up, and then we have uh, spiral sinks, we have spiral sinks, at all of the multiples of two pi. So that's when the pendulum is uh, going, going straight down. And that makes a lot of sense if we think about the physical system. It's gonna be a lot harder to spin the pendulum such that it stands straight up. Uh, and, and that will be kind of an unstable equilibrium point because if you perturb uh, that pendulum at all while it's in that state, it's just gonna flop right back down and end up in one of these sinks. And likewise, uh, these sink points should be stable because if we think about the, the system, it's a, it's a damped pendulum, most of the time it's gonna wanna end up uh, down there unless we get one of these very specific situations where we end up standing straight up. So uh, if we go over to our answers, we said the pendulum makes two complete revolutions and comes to a rest pointing straight up. It's a little weird, but that is uh, what we get. Question nine, let f of x be a periodic function with uh, a period, full period pi, given there, if g of x is the Fourier series of f of x, uh, like so, 
what would the value of g of 0 plus g of pi over 3 converge to? So like always, it's extremely important to graph this thing. So we're dealing with the sine of 2x from negative pi over 2 to 0. So that's going to give us uh, this kind of this kind of thing, minus pi over 2, 0, and it will go all the way down to negative 1. And then uh, what, what's going on? We have the cosine of 2x from 0 to pi over 2, so that will give us that kind of thing, where we have 1 and negative 1 again, and this is pi over 2, and it, and it, inter it intersects here at pi over 4. Whoops. Pi over 4. Awesome. So now that we know what our function looks like, let's think about what the Fourier series uh, will be doing because they're asking us they're asking us to compute g at 0, the Fourier series at 0, but we see that there is a discontinuity in our function at g is equal to 0. And what we know about Fourier series is that they will uh, tend to tend to split the difference. So if we actually evaluate our Fourier series at g, uh, sorry, at uh, t is equal to 0, we will find that it will evaluate to exactly uh, 1 half. So we can say that g of 0 is 1 half. Then what would g of pi over 3 be? Well, we don't, uh, the nice thing, we don't actually need to use any of these formulas. We don't need to compute a Fourier series because uh, everywhere else that's not a discontinuity, the Fourier series will uh, get infinitely close to uh, what the functions uh, that we have here that the Fourier series is approximating. So g at pi over 3, that's going to land us in this region. So really, we're just evaluating the, so g of pi over 3, we need to evaluate the cosine of 2 times pi over 3. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 will be negative 1 half. So we end up with uh, the answer of 0 uh, if, we, if we're adding these together like they want. So that's number 9. Question 10, if we write uh, the function sine x from 0 to pi over 2 and before we do anything we need to graph that uh, that's just going to look like that's just going to look like uh, that as a Fourier cosine series what will a1 be so the first co well yeah the first coefficient on a cosine term in the series so we need to extend this function such that it will be expressed as only a cosine series and remember that cosine series uh, are, mm, uh, represent functions that take the form f of t is equal to a, uh, f of negative t. And really what this means is that we're reflecting this function around the y-axis. So there we go. That's the uh, correct extension for us to use, and we can just keep repeating that pattern uh, like so. Uh, there we there we go. So we can grab a whole period of this function just from 0 to pi and see that really we can just write this as f of t is equal to sine of t with 0 less than t less than pi. And that's what we want to uh, approximate here. Since this is a full period, L, our half period, is going to be pi over 2. And let's just set up our, our, uh, our integral here. For a cosine series, uh, a n, a n will be 2 over l, integral from 0 to l, f of t, cosine, n pi t over l, dt. And what did we say l was? We said l was pi over 2, so I'm going to get 2 n t in there. And what is f of t on the interval, on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, well that's just going to be sine of t, sine of t, and then this uh, L will give us 4 over pi uh, right there. And since we're looking for a1, we might as well just replace our n's with 1's right now. That'll make our lives slightly easier. We have 2t in there. Then applying this formula here, applying this formula, we see that this integral, a1 is equal to 4 over pi times, uh, this integral is negative some fraction minus some fraction evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. 
Now we got to fill in these spots for the, the fraction. Uh, we have the cosine of m minus nt, where m is the thing in the sine and n is the thing in the cosine. So that will give us m minus n. That will give us the cosine of negative t over negative 2, and then the cosine of 3t over 6. So plugging in pi over 2 here, the cosine of negative pi over 2 and the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So that entire uh, side of our integral evaluates to 0. And then plugging in 0, uh, we will get 1 half minus 1 sixth, which is which is one, uh, which is one third. Okay, and so putting all this together, we have a one is equal to four over pi times four over pi times negative one third, which is minus four over three pi. That's e. And uh, sadly, or I don't know, not sadly, depending on how much Fourier series practice you want. That is actually it on this exam. See, right before it, we have some predator-prey systems. Right after it, we have some heat conduction uh, boundary value problems. So if you want more practice with Fourier cosine and, and sine series, or just general Fourier series, I've got uh, videos going over the quizzes from this semester, and also uh, the, a full run-through for the exam two from this semester, which is uh, like, uh, well, only the first half because then it also goes into to heat conduction and uh, wave problems. But that, that has another, you know, combined about 10 Fourier cosine and sine series questions if you want to go review those. And uh, again, Laplace transforms are available uh, elsewhere. All of the explanations for MA266's Laplace transform questions, which cover the exact same material as we do these days in this class. Okay, hopefully this was helpful. Um, and I'm going to go eat dinner.